This is Covering the Spread, part of the FanDuel Podcast Network. The Vegas Golden Knights now to a 2-0 lead in the Stanley Cup Finals, which means our focus now shifts back to the NBA with game number three coming up on Wednesday between the Heat and the Nuggets. That series all tied up at one game apiece. We're going to break down that game with Brandon Gandula for today, then ask Brandon as well about the RBC Canadian Open on the PGA Tour. This is covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network and NumberFire.com. My name is Jim Sonis. I am a senior writer and analyst for Number. Number Fire, joined here as mentioned by Brandon Gadula. Check him out on Twitter at Gadula13. Find his work over at numberfire.com. Brandon, the Heat made a nice little comeback in game number two. That series now tied up. Uh, we have not the best uh, PGA Tour field this week, but a, kind of a ramp up before next week's major. So, uh, kind of a still a fun time in the calendar. How are you doing today? I'm good. Yeah. I uh, love a good NBA Finals that has. Um some back and forth we're gonna see uh what miami has to offer at home uh but yeah i was kind of worried that that um that series would get a little bit out of hand even though my numbers have liked uh the heat uh for a while but i actually had one of those um for i mean i I never watch any sports live like (laughs) unless it's like a unless it's like a sunday round of a major yeah so I'm out golfing um, late into the twilight, uh, basically playing into the dark uh, on Sunday for during game two. And, yeah. you know, like in TV and movies, you get the uh, someone like turns on the radio and then it's just right then there's the breaking news alert, that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, get in the car. And, like, I don't listen to the radio, but it's set to the radio before my Bluetooth kicks on. Yeah. Start the ignition to come home and it's like oh denver 66 miami 64 i'm like at least I mean, it was a good least, point to get spoil that you know yeah but like at least it was so i was like trying to look on the bright side i was like well at least i know it's gonna be a close game but yeah. you know, miami came out firing and then denver came out and i was like i would have felt like those that game would have been a lot different had i not known that it yeah. eventually got tied back up but yeah there were um, tweets that I saw during the game that were like, they should end this series after three games because it's over. And then Miami won. That's, yeah, that's pretty much uh, why I love social media because those reactions are yeah usually logical and uh, not reactionary. But um, yeah. yeah. See, the only time I have to like record something is if it's like an F1 race early in the morning and I have some stuff going on that morning, I will DVR it. And if I do that, I have to mute like I just pause all the apps on my phone, like individually. So like I pause Twitter, pause ESPN, pause the athletic to make sure I get no notifications from those. I like I think Slack automatically. I don't check Slack anyway. But like you know, I have to go steps. I know that you don't check Twitter anyway. But like if I don't pause the app, I will reflexively open it if I have a second of free time. So I have to do that, that to like save myself from spoiling myself. Yeah, that's that's probably a different issue. Um, yeah, no, this is me. Yeah. Keep your phone down. But I mean, I know you're on Android, which you like to talk about. But do you do you have like a do not disturb function that you maybe. can use? Kind of... Wait, maybe. Then you should get any know. notifications. But I don't you know. What I want, it. like. Like, you, what if my wife sends me a funny tweet? I want to see that. Well, no, I wouldn't get it because of Twitter. Ah, oh, dang it. I didn't think about it. Instagram. She sends me a funny Instagram reel. I want to see that, you know? I can't be cut off from everything. This isn't like 1984. I love, I love uh, wait, the year or the book? Both? Well, <laughs> at least the year. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, boy. Putting computer chips in people's brains now. I'm a little uncomfy about it. So, you know, I, we'll say the book. Well, the um, movie, yeah. the year. Yeah, yeah. Did they make a movie yeah. out of it? I don't think they did. Did they? I don't know. Whatever. We got very sidetracked here. Anyway, we're going to break down game yeah. three of the NBA Finals with Brandon and then talk some golf after that. But first, a reminder to make sure you're subscribed to Covering the Spread wherever you get your podcast. Bit of a unique schedule for this week because of all the... Uh, all the all the NBA, all the NHL stuff going on, but also the Belmont Stakes coming up. So we're going to have a double day on Friday. We're going to have two shows a Friday to account for all that because we just have too much stuff we want to discuss and not enough time to do it. So a lot of shows coming up here 
in your feed. So in order to make sure you get those as they're posted, make sure you are subscribed to the Covering the Spread podcast feed wherever you get your podcast to get notified as these go live. And also check out the FanDuel YouTube page and subscribe there to get uh, notifications as they go live there as well. If you like what you hear on YouTube, leave us a thumbs up or an Apple podcast. Leave us a five-star rating as well. It is almost time to crown a new NBA champion, and FanDuel wants you to be part of the excitement because right now, new customers get a no-sweat first bet up to $2,500. That's $2,500 back in bonus bets if your first bet doesn't win. There's no better place to bet all the finals action than America's Number one sportsbook, FanDuel, official sports betting partner of the NBA. Must be 21 plus and present in select states. First online real money wager only. $10 deposit required. Refund issued is non-withdrawable bonus bets that expire in 14 days. Restrictions apply. See full terms at FanDuel.com slash sportsbook. FanDuel is offering online sports wagering in Kansas under an agreement with Kansas Star Casino, LLC. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit FanDuel.com slash RG in Arizona. 1-800-NEXT-STEP or text next step to 533-42. In Connecticut, 1-888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org slash chat. In Indiana, 1-800-9-WITH-IT. In Wyoming and Kansas, 1-800-522-4700 or in Kansas, ksgamblinghealth.com. Louisiana is 1-877-770-STOP. In Massachusetts, gamblinghelplinema.org. Or call 800 327 5050 for 24 7 support. In Maryland, mdgamblinghelp.org. In New York, 1 877 Hope and Wire, text Hope and Y. And in West Virginia, go to 1 800 Gambler.net. Let's kick things off here by talking about game number three, Brandon, the NBA Finals. That is in Miami for the Heat and the Nuggets. And as of right now at FanDuel Sportsbook, the Nuggets are two and a half point favorites, despite the fact this game is in Miami. Total is 214 and a half. And the Heat had the big comeback win in game two. And I want to talk to you about the first two games broadly, because we have not talked to you since the series began, Brandon. Any big takeaways from those first two games that alter the way you view this series as a whole? Um, so yeah, I think it's, uh, there's a chance that this thing can be a bit closer, uh, again, than, than I thought. Now I, I come from this thing, like my numbers, whenever you look at their splits without Tyler Hero on the court, and it seems like Tyler Hero, not quite ready to return, at least for game three, still experiencing some soreness and they're not going to rush things. He's, I think he said that he doesn't want to like interrupt the flow anyway, something like that. So, um, which is, you know good awareness uh, because their numbers are actually a bit better when he's off the floor, um, which I'm sure he doesn't quite know, but you know, it it is what it is. Um, But yeah, I think that uh, from the eye test standpoint, uh, it's just one of those situations where we know Miami is not a super deep team. We know that they're overperforming and we know that Denver has been a really good team for a couple years now uh, when they're at full health um, and they're, and they're like, you know, on all cylinders right now. So the eye test uh, just has me thinking, you know, entering this, that that Denver is going to run away with it. And, you know, game one didn't do a whole lot to quell those concerns. But in game two, you know, we saw some of the, you know, some of what makes playoff basketball. To me, I think my favorite uh, of all the sporting events, because it's about, how teams evolve over a potential seven game series. So we saw some of those coaching changes, some of those lineup changes. Uh, Kevin Love started game two, played 22 minutes. Um, Haywood Highsmith fell out of the rotation. Uh, Michael Porter Jr. as well, his minutes were uh, down, which is just interesting. We saw more of uh, Bruce Brown and uh, Christian Brown, um, which I know, you know, everyone loves Christian Brown, which is uh, just fun to see someone like that step up and make some plays, some hustle plays and, uh, you know, it's it kind of is, is really interesting for for people like that who can, you know, maybe change that the course of the NBA Finals with like one or two plays, which is always um, to me a really interesting note. But you know, overall, I weight the 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 true difference makers in. It's not like I'm completely revamping the way that I'm looking at this series based on, you know, I, I will factor in Kevin Love more, um, but you know the the Bruce Brown situation not necessarily moving the needle a ton um in, in my perspective so you know in terms of the what we've seen so far uh 
the problem for me with with like playoff basketball is we don't know who exactly is going to get heavy minutes in game three. We might right. think we can estimate, but there's going to be some changes. There's going to be some 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 tweaks here, especially if we had Tyler Hero coming back, but doesn't sound like we're going to. Um, of note, given sort of the – it was a pretty even game in game two based on the, the four factors, but the rebounding battle, uh, again, favored – uh, Denver. So I actually had them expected to win that game based on just if you strip away the actual score, look at the underlying data um, around 60% of the time. So this could be a 2 0 series. Um, that being said, uh, they did not win. And that is basically uh, what matters. And now we have a, a, an even series going back to Miami. An even series heading back to Miami, where the Heat are actually underdogs. Two and a half point dogs here on the or the at home in game number three. So let's talk about game three specifically, Brandon. When you look at that spread, look at that total. Can the Heat get a win here, or do the Nuggets rebound in game number three? So one thing to note here uh, for people who like the the totals, Miami plays slower at home than any team in the league. Uh, just kind of wanted to throw that out there, um, but. When I use the samples with key players active, uh, the Nuggets have a, a net rating, removing garbage time possessions, of a plus 7.1. For the Heat, it's a 2.1, which is a pretty big gap. But, of course, you have to make some adjustments for the context of this game. Home court uh, rest, playoff-specific adjustments where things, um, you know, efficiency tends to be down about three, about three points uh, off of offensive rating. So my model thinks that the spread should be half a point in Miami's favor, which wow. means that both the spread and money line are in play. Um, again, going back to like the eye test, I think Denver is a much better team. But the thing that's really impressed me is uh, Bam Adebayo. Uh, I kind of thought that he would be one of the true keys to the series. He's playing He's playing really well. Um, you know, Sometimes when I look at him, uh, playing he seems a little bit more passive but he seems to be more aggressive and taking advantage of the fact that uh Nikola Jokic is definitely not interested in getting into foul trouble um so Bam playing well is very interesting here and again the Heat have a 1-1 series in their midst with Jimmy Butler averaging 17 points per game he's been not looking like Jimmy I mean he's still contributing in other ways but uh, if we get like a 35 point game from Jimmy Butler uh, and everyone else plays, you know, somewhat close to their their potential. Um, I think that Miami has a lot of re- there's a lot of there's enough reason to think that the data is correct in this sense because Jimmy's not necessarily standing out, and they barely eked by to win um, game two. You know, just to say someone is due is problematic, but we know Jimmy Butler's a lot better um, than than what we've seen through two games and with the zone. With my uh, with Miami basically forcing Nikola Jokic to score, um, it it sort of took Denver out of what they do best. So I think there's enough reasons, whether it's slowing the game down, causing that higher variance with fewer possessions, um, you know, the, the zone, different rotation tweaks, role players tending to play better at home uh, in the playoffs. Um, I will take the two and a half points, but as as a nod to you, Jim, I will uh, bet the money line as well. Okay. I was going to ask what you'd be willing to do. It sounds like you prefer the spread because the plus two and a half is minus 112 right now. The money line for the Heat is plus 120. It sounds like based on you, what you're seeing, if you were to bet one of those, you would lean towards the spread. Is that correct? Yeah. If I had to bet one, if, like, if I was telling someone to bet one, I mm-hmm. would take the points. I think it's the smarter play. But in solidarity with you, and again, because my model does have Miami as the favorite, I personally will go the money line. So take that for how you will with how you jot things down. But no. I think both are pl- both are good plays for anyone listening. I mean, I do keep track of what we say on the show. Uh, but before you finished talking, I had already bet the money line. So I didn't <laughs> wait in that regard. <laughs> you gave me the green light basically by saying they were favored um, by a half point. So I didn't wait in that regard and did take uh, the heat money line. So, yeah, it's I feel inter- like, <clears throat> yeah. It's an interesting one if you just check different models. Um, I know ESPN's model um, is low on the heat. Uh, not to like, that's not a, I wasn't yeah. like referencing no. the, the meme, but you know, I think it's just due to their long term offense not being yeah. great. Uh, I think that's what 
really has thing bogs that things bogged down. But if you look at some other models, uh, they pretty much say what mine does too. Mm -hmm. um, so that's always reassuring. But yeah, I think that it's not it's not outrageous, and the fact that the spread is is still relatively tight, yeah, um, kind of does mean this is anyone's game. So I don't think we're overreacting to a game two win uh, by by leaning to the Heat. And I do I would say that two and a half is significant in terms of the spread. So if you want to go spread over money line, I get it. Just yeah. my personal preference is to go uh, money line there. Okay, no, so Brandon, we know we know oh, yeah. from from talking about this, we know. <laughs> Uh, Brandon does like the heat money line at plus 120 or the spread at plus two and a half at minus 112. We'll see how things play out in game number three. And of course, we'll talk more some, some more NBA later on this week here on the show as well. But for now, let's shift focus and talk about some PGA. It's not, again, the best event for this week, the RBC Canadian Open. And I'm sure to your delight, Brandon, it is also the first time they have played this course. Uh, it is at Oak Hill Golf and Country or Oakdale Golf and Cl Country Club. Never hosted a PGA Tour event. So... Give me your best guesswork. Uh, based on what you've read, what key characteristics should we know about this course? Um, sorry. Whenever, whenever you do like the inch and in feet notation, the single apostrophe is for feet, and then the double yes. is for inches. Correct. Yes. Because for anyone who doesn't know, the the GCSAA is a great resource for figuring out like uh, just course stats. Um, but there's not a whole lot on this particular course, but I think an update from when I had it initially, because I just refreshed this, it says rough bluegrass four with a single apostrophe. So I don't think they mean four feet. Four feet <laughs> rough, but um, if they're playing a four foot rough, I'm concerned. Yeah. Um, so we're, we're looking at, uh, you know, average greens, which is, uh, I think, updated from what I saw, too. It's 6,000 square feet, um, par 72, over 7,200 yards. So a um, bit short for a par 72. And again, no past course data to look at. But if you look at, like, the course flyover, mm -hmm. it I think we can learn a little bit, um, you know, and, and, like, looking at the scorecard, too. We've got some – we've got a lot of short uh, par fours, uh, five really sharp – really short uh, par fours, three long par fours, uh, and then all of the par fives are short to average. So I think we can find some shorter hitters uh, toward the top of the leaderboard uh, for this week. I think there's going to be multiple forced layups, which is kind of key as well. Uh, so ultimately the thing that I'm, I'm sticking to, and I think makes sense is not, overweighting driving distance. I don't think driving distance is going to be enough to fly some of these forced like layups. Um, therefore it's going to put a lot of golfers in play. And we know that we have uh, one single favorite uh, for this week. He's a big hitter, Roy McElroy. I think his advantage on the field is going to be a bit lessened. So I think he's fascinating, but again, overall, I think that this course will play. It should play fairly easily. Based on what I'm seeing, again, this is a lot of looking at the course, looking at whatever notes I can find and making assumptions. Um, but yeah, I think that some of the shorter hitters will be viable this week. What that always does is puts more people in, in uh, potential to contend. So uh, it's one of those weeks. And again, it's not a great field. So we have, you know, I, I think Frandall actually has a, it's like a big guns versus the field market which is pretty telling uh that you can narrow this one down to like i think it's like four big names in the field i was gonna say is it just rory versus the field <laughs> i think it's it was like of course now i can't find it because i'm talking yeah. about it but um you know may, may, maybe we'll come across it here yeah as we um, explore oh so wait, here, here it is uh rory tiro hatton Matt Fitzpatrick and Sam Burns. Okay. What's the field versus them? Uh, field is uh, minus two thirty five. Big guns okay. plus one eighty. So you've probably kind of answered this already, but let's talk about Rory McIlroy. He is the favorite here at FanDuel Sportsbook. He's five to one, as you mentioned. Could flatten things out uh, with the forced layups and stuff like that. But Rory has kind of surged back to life the past couple of events. He's five to one. Uh, Cheryl Hatton's second shortest at eleven to one. Have you seen enough from Rory 
the past couple of events to view him as a value at that number, or does the way the course is laid out prevent him from quite getting there? Yeah. So to clarify um, what you're talking about with like the recent events, Rory's been T seven at the PG championship uh, was T seven at Memorial as well. Um Two, two designated events, good fields, obviously one of those being a major. And he's also back-to-back Canadian Open champion. Yeah, he's he has no one has won the Canadian Open since 2018 other than Rory McIlroy. <laughs> Let's phrase it that way instead. Sounds better. It does sound a lot better, but uh, two, for two years due to COVID, uh, there was no event. But yet, yeah, Rory looking to go, I mean, it, this would still be back-to-back-to-back. Uh, technically, so that'd be yeah. the full of Mansky. Uh, three, um, three courses too, right? Yeah. So that's yeah. the one. That's the thing is like just because Rory's won here. I mean, you yeah. can make the case for like Canadian courses, he gets bumped up, but um, <laughs> technically going for the the you know the back to back to back opportunity. Um, but yeah, those those T sevens are off the heels of the missed cut at the Masters and a T forty seven at the Wells Fargo with bad irons. Um, you know, just kind of a, a teachable moment here. Um, shout out chase you, but uh, just because Rory McIlroy has two bad events with iron play does not mean that he's going to trend that way. If anything, it probably means that he's going to return to long-term form uh, for Rory. And speaking of that long-term, he's the best golfer in the field. Of course, that shouldn't surprise anyone. Um, I have his, his uh, win odds at about 15% which is not enough at five to one where you need them around like uh, 16.7%. Um, so I can't get to Rory. I can't recommend him. Sometimes like it's yeah. close enough where I was like, I, I'm not going to get there, but I, I think other people could just based on that number alone. I don't really see the value um, on Rory for the week. Unfortunately, that's kind of the overarching theme for outrights yeah. uh, for the week. Yeah, I think that with his win odds being 15%, though, it's close enough where it says to me he's not being undervalued in your model. Because if he's undervalued in your model, it's going to allocate too much win equity to other guys. And I'd be yeah. concerned about showing value elsewhere. But it sounds like because he's gobbling up win equity, it means nobody is a value based on your model, correct? Yeah, so uh, whenever someone is 15% likely and is not like an egregious betting value, then you're typically on the right path. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so, but that leaves 85% of the potential wins spread throughout everyone else. So you're going to have to kind of get um, a good number uh, here and there on guys to, to really want to dive in. That being said, I have, and you know, this is, this is not necessarily a small difference. Um, I have Tyrrell Hatton at 12 to one. He's 11 to one. And due to the fact that I love, you know, I'm going to stick with my, my course fit uh, just assumptions here Yeah, where it's not going to be about driving distance and it's going to be more of a, an approach around the green and putting kind of weak. Um, that's close enough for me to want to go with Tyrrell Hatton because I'm not going to be chasing a whole lot of other stuff uh, for the week. He's just a dominant golfer. The weakness for him generally distance, um, but he's accurate. And again, one of the best uh, like fairway through green players that we have on tour. So I think it's the right setup uh, for Hatton and I'm in on Hatton. And then the other name, well, I, I, there's one name in, in, in particular that I'm also going to get some exposure to, but for the most part, there's a lot of golfers in like the 30 to 65 range who I think are about two percentage points away or sorry, 0.2 percentage points away. Yeah. So like, it's just constant, not something that I want to get uh, exposure to, but uh, Sahith Thagala is 30 to one on FanDuel Sportsbook. I have him at what's the equivalent of like 31 to 32 uh, to one. So and once I get to that point, that's that that percentage point gap is, is a bit different, but consistently hits the irons well, putts well. Um, not necessarily a great driver, but again, I don't think that's going to be the most key stat, at least not from a distance standpoint. So I think that could work out for him. And he's really fascinating for me because people like him. So he's been popular and he's been overvalued. He's been one of the more overvalued golfers in my model 
for a long time. And I think that luster is wearing off. And so then he's back to like where he probably should have been all along. And that ultimately is why I like the model. Cause it just shows me based on long-term with more recent waiting on uh, recent events or sorry, like heavier waiting on more recent events um, adjustments for field strength. Here's where guys probably should be. Yeah. And then I can go from there. So that that's why I'm in on Hatton and, and I will uh, also bet Sahith Fagala uh, for this week. The numbers on those two guys, Hatton 11 to one, Sahith Fagala 30 to one. And as Brandon mentioned, not quite values by his model, but close enough where if you want some action in the outright markets, you can turn there. They're, they're values in my heart this week. That's right. That's the true model. Yeah. The will to win. Uh, what about non outrights? Anything standing out to you there? It's also kind of kind of tough, um, at least in my the way that I'm viewing things and the way that my model uh, is looking at stuff. But it's two top 20s uh, that I like. Alex Smalley. Um, I didn't jot down his number here. I think I, I overwrote it. Uh, I top, he's top 15 in iron play. There we go. Uh, he is plus 250. Yeah, that sounds right. Um, top 15 iron player in the field over the past 50 rounds, according to Data Golf. 12th overall in strokes game, T to green. Uh, missed the cut last week with a really bad short game, but T40 at the Charles Schwab in spite of bad putting. Uh, and then if you go back to like when he had positive putting, but <laughs> like barely positive putting, uh, T23 at the PGA Championship, which is probably equivalent to like a T7 in, in this yeah. field, uh, and a T18 at the Wells Fargo Championship. Uh, so I like Smalley based on the, the fit. And so then sort of the inverse, uh, Ben Griffin, top 20. I have 290 here, uh, plus Correct. 290. So um, wrote that one down. So you're welcome, Jim. Uh, not a great ball striker. Like Smalley's a great ball striker with iffy short game. Griffin's basically the, the opposite. 82nd in overall ball striking over the past 50 rounds. Eighth in short game. Not super accurate off the tee, but, you know, the, the, the form overall is, is there for Griffin and – um, if I were to like bet a long shot, I would consider Griffin. So if mm-hmm. anyone wants to like put down just a partial unit there, um, I don't mind that. But for me, I'm I'm focusing more on the top twenty market for him. Again, uh, that was Ben Griffin plus two ninety. He was right beneath Smalley, so I actually didn't have to nice. scroll at all. So that actually made it a lot easier. Smalley plus two fifty uh, for the top twenty over at FanDuel Sportsbook. Anything else you like for this week, or uh, pretty thin based on what we're seeing here? <sighs> pretty thin. Yeah. We got NBA Finals. Um, we got stuff we can entertain ourselves with. WNBA as well. So, got anything for tonight? I haven't run it yet or no? Yet, and I wow. would not. Uh, Rude. Yeah. Maybe we can talk. Believe in, it or not, Jim asked, show. Jim asked me to to have NBA finals prep for a day in advance, and then still wants WNBA in addition. Okay. Well, DM me. Maybe we'll yeah, get. Yeah, that, that's fine. We'll get some WNBA uh, discussion on the show here eventually. Maybe? Huh? Can Kanye into that? I don't know. We'll we'll see. It's uh I'm using all of my my process from NBA to transfer it to WNBA, but um, I don't know if I'll become as well versed. I kind of scratch, man. So just saying. No uh no Brandon picks for NBA. It might be a little a little dry. So just saying. Uh work on it and we're gonna I'll work on you to try to get you talking some WNBA here on the show as well. But that is all that we have here for today on covering the spread. As mentioned, please make sure you are subscribed because it is a weird week, potentially six shows undecided as of now, who can say we'll talk some UCL finals coming up. We'll talk some more Stanley Cup, more NBA all right here and some Belmont stakes pitching ninja back this week too so a lot of good stuff right here on covering the spread to get all of it as it is posted make sure you're subscribed to covering the spread wherever you get your podcast brandon thank you for swinging by for today uh enjoy game three hopefully no spoilers for you we'll talk to you again soon thank you jim i might watch this one live tonight wow it's not tonight or yeah that's what i meant that's what i meant <laughs> you can watch it live tonight if you want it's not going to be there though you enjoy yeah uh, yeah yeah, yeah. Check out Brandon on Twitter at Cadula13. Check out his work at Number Fire. I am on Twitter at Jim Sonis. We'll talk to you all once again tomorrow. This has been covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network. <laughs>